Hey everyone, I have a really large uh, homeschool haul to share with you today. I am going to preface this video by saying my family is playing a video game in the background, so you may hear them. I'm sorry, but they live here. So um, I have uh, school supplies, some art supplies, and a bunch of books. Uh, a good amount of this is from Amazon, some is from Half Price Books and some is from eBay. So let me show you what I have. So the first thing I got was a few art supplies. I shared a video recently, which I will link, um, a watercolor curriculum um, that I want to try myself first and then my kids can use it as well. So um, they had a great list within the curriculum of kind of both a mid-range supply list and like a higher end supply list. And I went through and got some of the mid-range options for myself. So the first thing I got was this watercolor set um, pocket box from Van Gogh. And it looks like that. So I got that for myself. I'm excited to try this out. I also got, my kids really needed new watercolor sets this year as well, just for art in general. These ones were a, a bit cheaper than this one. The sets we have right now, we've had for a few years, and they are from Michaels. They were just kind of like the Michaels bargain set. And they've been okay, but I don't love them. They're very powdery, even after they dry. Like, um, yeah, I just, I don't love them. So I decided to try this set. This is Jerry Q Art. Uh, I don't know that the quality on this is a whole lot better, um, but it's what we're going to try for them. So this is what it looks like. I have a feeling these might be powdery too, although maybe not as powdery as the set we have. It has a little dish there, a little sponge, and a little water brush, and I, I think some of the some of the caked stuff here kind of spread, so I'll need to clean that up. But um, I got two of those, one for each of my kids, so we will see how that works. I also got a water-soluble pencil to go along with the watercolor curriculum that I'm going to try. And then I also got these dust-free Faber-Castell erasers. This was a pack of four that was also recommended. And... These brushes are for me. <laughs> and then after I use them, we will see if I pass these on to the kids or not. They have a ton of brushes. They're not super careful with brushes yet, so I don't necessarily want to let them loose with these, but I am going to use these for now. And then I just needed to replenish our watercolor uh, paper pad. And this is the exact same one we got last year, and this was the one that was recommended um, in that watercolor curriculum. So. So that's what I got this time. So those, I believe, are all the art supplies. And um, just some general school supplies. I got these Ticonderoga white cap erasers. I've never used this before, but the kind of cap erasers that we bought in the past just do not work well. They um, don't stay on the pencil well. They rip, um, and I don't like them. So... I decided to give these a try this year. We go through a lot of erasers. We do use like a, not this eraser, but a, you know, this kind of a rectangular eraser as well, but they also like to have erasers on the end of their pencils and they work through the one that's on there already really quickly. So we're gonna give those a try. I also decided to try these gel highlighters this year. These were recommended as ones that aren't gonna bleed through the page. Um, for like annotating and things. We'll be doing a lot of highlighting this year. So I grabbed these, they're by Mr. Penn. And I got kind of this brighter set and then this more pastel set. So I'm excited to kind of crack into those. Uh, we go through Sharpies like crazy. So I just have the regular Sharpies and then the like extra fine um, tip Sharpies as well. My kids use those a lot for different art projects. So last year for pencils, we used some Ticonderoga, and then I also had gotten my kids these like nicer, more expensive mechanical pencils. They did not like them. They said the lead broke way too easily, and I, I think they're great. I'm using them, but for this year, I found these on sale for like $4 um, for this big pack of the big ones. So we're gonna go with those. They also did really like the Ticonderoga pencils last year, so I just got a couple smaller packs of those. Um, I got this pastel set, 
and then the brights set this is the set we had last year and i do think they used through the whole pack from last year so we have those to start our new school year we also needed tape my kids go through tape like you would not believe um, a three pack of this tape at target is ten dollars um, this on Amazon I think was $13 and you got six packs of tape and it also came with a tape dispenser. I did not realize it came with a tape dispenser, um, but that's fine. We'll use it. Um, this means I can have one at my desk and then this one can be kind of with our art cart. So I just, um, cleaned out and organized our art cart. I did, um, make a video on that. So I will link that. Um, but tape is one of the things I needed to restock that cart. And then the last school supply I got was just these two um, Mead Five Star folders. These are my favorite folders. And um, we just kind of on a whim bought one on clearance at Target uh, a few years ago now. And it's my favorite folder for the kids. It's their favorite folders. We've gotten a couple of others since then. These were on uh, sale on Amazon for $2.50 a folder. They can be up to $5, which is a lot for a folder, um, but these just hold up so well. And so they each have two, so I just got one more for each of them, so they'll each have three of these folders. I didn't really need to buy notebooks um, or anything else for school supplies uh, this year. I probably need to get a pack of lined paper, but I can throw that on grocery order at whatever point. I may or may not need a couple binders, but I'm not buying any right now because I think we will be just fine with what we have, but there's always that potential to need that. All right, on to the books. So I love half price books, but whenever I go, I try to stick to the clearance section because I do think sometimes their books are overpriced. Um, when you compare to getting it new on Amazon, sometimes it's cheaper to get it new on Amazon. But this is a book that I've been wanting. It's a People's History of the United States. And this was in the clearance section for $4. So I grabbed that. Uh, these are not sorted by where I got them from. This I picked up on eBay for just a few dollars, and this is to go along kind of with our creative writing unit. I had borrowed it from the library to kind of check it out, and then I decided I wanted to go ahead and get it. So we got that on eBay. This is one I shared a video, I think it was what I read in maybe May, and this was a book I read and absolutely loved. And this is regularly, like on Amazon, um, like 16 or 17 dollars suggested retail is 25 but i went ahead and got it because it was randomly one day only like eight dollars on amazon and this is something i want my kids to read i wouldn't mind rereading it so i went ahead and grabbed that um let's see i got a few books from oh i forgot about this from book outlet now i had not planned on buying <laughs> the books for Torchlight that we're gonna do, the read-alouds, because we'll probably listen to them in audio. But I do have one kid who sometimes likes to read along with us, and I also thought if I have the book that in times where maybe it's not appropriate for us to listen to an audio, I could have this and read aloud. So I was already placing an order on a book outlet or something else, and they had four of the read-alouds that we're going to be doing, and it was cheaper or the same price, then I could get them used on eBay. So I picked up the Parker Inheritance, the Story Collector, I Can Make This Promise, and Beyond the Bright Sea. So I grabbed all of those. And I also got a few of those from eBay, those Torchlight Readers. This one was A Tale Magnolias. This one's hardcover. And then Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky. So those two are from eBay. All right, and then this is one I'd had on my list for a while to get to go along with our um, election unit. I, will, I made a video on that. I will try to link it for you. Um, the one I borrowed from the library was in the older edition. Um, but this is an updated edition, so I wanted to kind of to get this one. I could have gotten the older edition cheaper on eBay, um, but the updated edition was not really any cheaper on eBay, so I just went ahead and got it on Amazon. So we have that to add to our election unit. 
Um, these two books I recently saw uh, in another YouTube video and I thought they would be great additions either to our election unit or just for me to read and then use with my kids another year. Um, but this one is called, you call this democracy, how to fix our government and deliver, there's a sticker over it, power to the people, I assume. Yes. Uh, so I thought this one looked really good. And then this one, um, I will definitely be reading this. I don't know if we're going to use this in our unit or not yet, but this is a CIA analyst guide to spotting fake news. It's called True or False by Cindy L. Otis. And let's see. Here's another eBay one. Um, I showed this again in my election unit video. I had borrowed it from the library, when it, but I wanted to get a copy just for us to have in our collection. So this was like brand new and only a few bucks uh, on eBay. So I grabbed that and I have a few, uh, I have a few more things from Half Price Books and then a few things from Amazon. So this is one I picked up at Half Price Books in their clearance section. It was only $2. It's Big Thinkers and Big Ideas, an introduction to Eastern and Western philosophy for kids. We are going to be reading through a philosophy book um, as part of Torchlight for next year. And I thought for $2, this might be uh, a nice one to have on hand while we're doing that. I also grabbed two things, the only two things I think I got from Half Price Books that were not on clearance. This is called Fractured Fairy Tale Math. It was $5.99. I showed in another video a Half Price Books haul, which um, I can try to link. And um, I had gotten a I think it was like, uh, I'm trying to remember now, was it Jokes and Riddles maybe? There, it was another math um, one kind of like this. It's gonna drive me crazy because I can't remember. I'll link the video, but I got another one. Um, and I saw this one and thought, hey, I bet he would like this too. I'm thinking for my son one day a week, instead of his regular math, have him do uh, one of these. So that was $5.99. This is something that I had been looking at for quite a while on uh, the Critical Thinking Company's website. And it is called, I don't know if you can see this, uh, The Language Mechanic. And it is just kind of like, a, I would use this as a review um, for grammar and punctuation, capitalization, that kind of thing. Um, and this was only $7.49, so I decided to pick it up because it had been on my list for a while. This is kind of what it looks like. So, um, I try to have a plan when I purchase things, but I don't have a plan specifically for this one yet, but it was unusual to see this at Half Price Books, and it had been on my list, so um, I decided to go ahead and grab it. I got that. Oops, you sorry about that. And then uh, the last couple things I got were from Amazon. This one is just for my daughter uh, this summer uh, to kind of refresh on her fractions and decimals. This is a grade five and it's just really, really simple and not too much on a page. So I think that will be good for her to keep refreshed this summer. This is something I got because I would like to incorporate these next year into our math. I got grade five and grade six. These are the interactive notebooks for math. Um, so I'm still in the process of kind of previewing these to see if I think I can make them work. So I'm not positive we're going to use these. They may end up going back, but for right now, I think that these would be a good addition to our math studies for next year. And then lastly, I picked this up for my son for next year. This is the Evan Moore Reading Comprehension Fundamentals. This is grade five. Um, he is going into grade four, but this seemed like kind of uh, a good fit for where his reading level is. I contemplated going up a little, but I don't really want to miss anything. And I like this in addition to whatever else we're doing for reading because um, it covers like 
comprehension activities for nonfiction tasks. It's got nonfiction genre study, um, comprehension activities for fiction texts, fiction genre study. There's just a lot of really good little activities in here that I can do one-on-one -on -one with him. Um, and I just think this will be a good like extra reading um, addition for him. So I went ahead and grabbed that as well. And I think that is everything I have in my haul. Um, we are, I think, good to start our upcoming school year. Uh, we shouldn't need any more purchases. I think we have everything that we're gonna need. So now it's just finishing prepping and organizing everything. So I will be making videos um, as I do that and I will share those with you guys when I have them. So let me know if you have any questions. I will try to link as much of this as I can down in the description box. But anyway, let me know if you have any questions. I will talk to you in the comments down below.